Let's get nostalgic today. Today I'm working with textures in Luminar AI. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Well, let's do some texturing today and I thought today we would use uh, Luminar AI. And uh, I wanna start out here in Photoshop and what I want to do is duplicate the background layer. I'm just doing a command or control J to do that. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this layer and convert to a smart object because we're going to send it into Luminar AI and do the texturing and then we'll send it back into Photoshop. But if we decide, hey, we don't quite like something or we need to alter something in the textures, we'll be able to go ahead and launch Luminar AI back up and fix some things if needed. Before we get started, I wanted everybody to know there's a couple of days left for the uh, Topaz Sharpen AI sale. It's on sale for $59.99. Now, if you click on my affiliate link in the description below uh, and use my promo code David Kelly, that's all one word, David Kelly at checkout, you'll save an additional 15% off that sale price, which is a nice savings. I make a small commission. It helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. And anybody that purchases software through my affiliate links, it really helps my channel. And I thank you for it. Now let's get started. We've already duplicated the background layer and we've converted uh, that into a smart object and now we can go into Luminar AI. So we'll come up here to filter and we'll go ahead and launch Luminar AI and we will get started. And here we are in Luminar AI. Now here we're in the template section. I'm not going to use a template. I'm going to go right to edit. So I'm going to click on edit and I'm not even going to go into the actual tools themselves. I'm going to come right up here to this brush where it says local masking. Click this because inside of local masking is where the texturing tool lives. And to get it, we come up here to add. We'll click on add. Now we have two choices here. We can use a basic adjustment tool, which is a great tool. And we're going to use that shortly here but first off we're going to start out with texture so click on texture and i believe uh luminar doing it this way because remember luminar doesn't work with uh layers but to me these textures are kind of like layers it's kind of like sitting maybe on top of all the adjustments you made they let you use these uh, this basic tool and the texture tool is layers i'm not 100 percent sure about that but i'm pretty sure that's the way it works but if you know how it really works, let me know in the uh, description below. I'd like to know. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump right on into this. Now, here's the texture tool. And we have some advanced settings here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the advanced settings because I may or may not use a blend mode. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead and open up that up anyway. Let's go up here to the texture section. It's a drop down. So click here. And Luminar give you some textures. And I've added some of my own textures here. And by the way, if you need to add textures, just click this plus and a And your browser dialog will open up. Just point it to where your textures live. Now, there's one thing that I'm a little upset about is, and I would like to bring a whole bunch of textures into here at once. And if anybody knows how to do that, please let me know in the description below. But it only lets you bring in one texture at a time, which is kind of a bummer. But at least it lets you see your textures here, which is which is cool. And if you want a texture, like say, for instance, if I wanted to bring in this texture here called Harbor Wall, I can click it and then click open, or I can just double click it and look, it applies that texture to my image. That's not the one I want to use on this image, but that's how you bring textures in. So let's click here again. The texture I want to use is, I believe, this guy right here, Desert Gen. Yeah, that's the texture I want. And already that looks pretty good. Now, right now, we are in the normal blend mode, as you can see here. So usually what I like to do is start out and pull my opacity up the whole way. And when you do, all you see is the actual texture itself. And then what I like to do is go through blend modes and see how blend modes interact with my image. Let's go ahead here and see, like some of my favorite blend modes are like multiply, sometimes color burn. Multiply makes it a little bit too much on the dark side. Lighten screen. Now most of these blend modes that they give you here will kind of work pretty well with textures, but overlay is a really good one and soft light as well as hard light. So what do I like the best? I think I like, it's either, no, hard light's a little too strong, soft light or uh, overlay. I think soft light. I re Here's what I like. I really enjoy what's happening to the 
uh, flowers themselves. I like the texture of the flowers. It's giving me a very nice nostalgic feel. I also like the way the cup now looks. Now let's take a look. Here's the before and now the after. The texture's warming up the image a bit, but I can get a little bit of extra warm tone out of here if I take the saturation and drag it to the right. Now it's going to adjust the saturation on the texture itself, but not on the entire image, but it's only working with the actual texture. So I might just add a little bit of extra saturation on there to bring out some of that warm color. And you can play with the hue as well if you want to. And you can also play with contrast and brightness. But I think it looks really good just the way it is. Now, I would like some more texture to be on the background. And we're going to go ahead and add this uh, texture one more time. Let's go ahead and come up to Add. So we're going to add another texture. I'm going to add that same texture. So we're going to click this drop down again. And let me go to that exact same texture. This guy right here, Desert Gin. And then, this time, I'm not going to change the blending mode. I'm going to leave it on normal. So let's click Advanced Settings. So you can see it's on normal. Uh, the opacity may be a little too strong. Let me pull back the opacity a little bit. And I obviously don't like it on the cup and the flower, so I'm going to remove it from there. So what we're going to do is come up to here. See this icon right here? We can add a mask, and we can go ahead and remove it from the flower and the cup. I may leave a little bit of it on there, but I'll take most of it off. So I'm going to adjust my radius and uh, I'm going to make my brush not quite as soft, maybe somewhere around there. And that size of a radius, maybe right there looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure I'm in the erase mode. Now I'm going to start erasing and well, I'm going to take the opacity and pull it back just a little bit. I'm going to leave a little on there. Let's try this. Let's experiment on this flower right here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave the opacity at that setting right there and go ahead and just really paint it off these flowers. I'm going to be a little sloppy and a little bit fast. I could have made my brush bigger, but I'm just going to go with the size I have right here. Take it off the cup like so. Let's take my time and get it right. I'm going to see what it looks like on the handle if I leave it on the handle. It's not going to affect the handle too much, but let me go ahead and make my brush a little bit smaller. And maybe even smaller than that. And just take it off the handle. A little bit. I think it'll help. Sometimes these little extra things you do really can make for a difference. Yeah, and I do like that. But that looks pretty cool, I think. Now, we can take this opacity here, and it's at a 40 right now. But let me take it back a little bit more, maybe to somewhere, that's 30, maybe up a little bit, maybe like a 35, what do you think? And then we can come up here to this little eye and we can click and hold down. Here's the before and here's the after. And I really like it. I think it looks really good. We have that nice nostalgic feel. We're not done here because what I want to do is darken the bottom of this up just a little wee bit. Before I darken the bottom of this image, let me show you something that you can do, which is kind of cool. See here where it says place texture. If you click this, you see the bounding box on the image. Let me make the image smaller so you can see it. See that bounding box? Now you can transform this texture. In other words, you can make it smaller. You can make it larger. Or you can hover over the corners here and you can rotate the texture. You see that, how it's rotating? So what if I didn't want it quite straight there? I may want to rotate it and add just a little bit of tension back there, make it a little bit different than the first texture. So we'll change the direction that it's going. And then I can drag this around like this. And just make sure you have the entire image you know, covered with the texture. And I kind of like that right there. And when you're happy with it, you can just click uh, Place Texture again. And there it is on there. Now let me make the image bigger. But isn't that cool? So you can actually move it around, transform it, do whatever you want. That's a really nice feature with uh, Luminar AI. But wait, there's more. You can also, you know, flip these textures horizontally by clicking here. You see how it's changing. And you can flip them vertically. So you might like one position better than the other. I kind of like the way it was, but don't forget about these two because you can sometimes change things up the way that texture looks. Sometimes just by flipping it really will alter the look in a good way. Now we're going to go ahead and darken the bottom of this image just to close it off. I think it'll look nice and you'll see here in a sec. So let's go up here to add and we're going to get a basic tool right here. And what I want to do here is 
just simply uh, pull the exposure down a little bit. Maybe we'll try it around there. We can come back and alter it. But let's come up here to paint mask and let's get a gradient mask. And all I want to do is, it says click and drag a gradient. I'm just going to click and drag a gradient up somewhere right around there. Now let me go ahead and pull this down a little bit. Now we can widen this graduation zone here by dragging up on here. And let me just pull this down to maybe right around here. And now let's take that exposure and pull it back just a little bit more. I think I want to pull this gradient up just a little bit right there. Okay, so let's check this out. Here's the before and here's the after. You see that? It just closes off the bottom of that image. Now it's encroaching into this cup a little bit. If I didn't want that, I could come up here and click this drop down and click on paint mask. And now make sure you're in the erase mode. And here's my brush size. It's pretty small. I'll make it a little bit larger. And I think I'm going to take the opacity the whole way up though. The softness I think is good. And maybe I'll make this just a little bit larger. And what I'm going to do is just paint it off the bottom of this cup right here. Because it, I think that darkness on the cup looks a little strange. So let me make sure that's not in there like that okay so here's the before and here's the after and what do you think i like it and one final thing we can do before we send this back into photoshop because i'm really happy with it if you feel your overall effect is too strong you can wait to get back in photoshop and ease back in the adjustment or you could come here and see where it says my template edited i can just take this and this is like a master opacity slider i could pull this back and ease the entire effect off everything but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to send it back into Photoshop and just pull back in the opacity a little bit if I need to. But don't forget, I made this a smart object, so I can always come back in here and alter things if I need to. All my settings and adjustments will be right where I left off. And now we're ready to send this back into Photoshop. But notice something. Where did my apply go? Normally, there's an apply to send this back into Photoshop, and it's missing. Have no fear, though. Whenever you have a basic adjustment open, the apply goes away. So just close your basic adjustment and apply will come back up. Now that doesn't hold true with, with the texture. If your texture is open, the apply will still remain there. But if you open up a basic adjustment and you don't close it, you'll lose that apply. So make sure you close the basic adjustment so you can see the apply. Now we can go ahead and click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And now we're back in Photoshop. Here's my before and here's my after. I like it, but if I felt I went a little bit too strong on the texturing, I could come to the opacity and maybe just ease back on a little bit. And I think I'll do that. I think I'm going to come back to like a, like a 90. I think that looks good. Now here's again, here's my before and here's my after. I want to do one last thing, and that is to add a little bit of a vignette around it, okay? I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to take this lasso tool, and the shortcut for the lasso tool is L on your keyboard. I'm just going to take a lasso tool and draw a loose selection right around this like so. And I'm going to make a vignette. But to do that, what I'm going to do is come down to the adjustment layers. And you can take any old adjustment layer you want. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. And when you do, you see that it's created this layer mask for you. Now it's the opposite of what I want. So I need to invert it. So the shortcut for that is Command or Control I to invert the mask. And the next thing I want to do is change my blend mode from normal to multiply. And you can see now around the edges, I have this darkened appearance. Now that's the start of my vignette, but I'm not done yet. What I need to do is feather this edge here because this doesn't look right. So I need to feather the edge. All you need to do is come up to this icon right here for the layer mask, click on this, and then take this feathering slider and drag it to the right a good bit. You know, if you don't drag it enough, it's not going to be feathered enough. So just drag it till it looks like it's blending very well. And somewhere right around there looks pretty good now it's a little too dark on the edge so what i want to do is just take this opacity and pull it back just till it blends where i can see i have a vignette but it's not like sticking out like a sore thumb and maybe like you know like maybe somewhere around 50 percent 51 percent 
let's click this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. But you see that it makes a really nice vignette, but it's a custom vignette. You can make it just the way you want it. I'm basically just using the multiply to darken the edges. And if you'll notice, if I click on the properties and click on the actual curves adjustment, there's no adjustment whatsoever. So it's only the multiply blend mode that is causing the vignetting effect, the darkening of the edges. Well, for now, I think I'm done. So at this point, I would save out my image. On a Mac, it's Command S to save your image for the shortcut. On a PC, it's Control S, or you could come up here to File and just click Save. I would save it as a PSD with all my layers intact. That way, I could always come back into Photoshop later. And remember, I have a smart object, a smart filter, Luminar AI. I could double click Luminar AI, send me back into Luminar, work on the textures, add some more edits inside of Luminar, send it back into Photoshop, and continue from there if I needed to. But at this point, I am done. Well, there you go, everyone. Our image started out looking like this, and then after some editing in Photoshop, Luminar AI, we now look like this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Gully. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. <laughs>